Hello everybody, how you doing? Hope you all had a great Easter weekend, uh, Easter Sunday. I know I did, it was a great time. Got to FaceTime with family, um, got to talk to my sister. Uh, just, uh, just a great time. I got to go to church online, which we've been doing of course, but I really uh, appreciate it more because I get to actually sit through whole service with my wife. Um, normally on Sundays I'm running around from campus to campus and if I do get to sit with her during service, it's probably a good 10 minutes and that's it. So I really appreciate this time, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong, I love what I do, but to be able to sit down with my wife is awesome. So that was my weekend. You know, but speaking of family, this takes me back to when I was younger. Um, I was younger. My mom walking around the house and she was singing this song. And um, I'll try to sing it for you. She'd sing in Spanish, of course, and it went like this. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. She would repeat this over and over and over again. Bless her heart. But I didn't know what was going on. Like, why is she repeating this over and over? I don't know if you've seen Groundhog Day. That's what it felt like. I was living in that. It was looping over and over and over and over and over. Well, it wasn't until... I got older and became a believer myself and started reading the Bible and studying God's word more that I, I learned what she was singing. It's, in English, it's hallelujah. So she was singing hallelujah, hallelujah. When we look at that word hallelujah, it's actually two words put into one. Hallel means a joyous song, okay? It means a joyous praise in song. And then you got Yah, which is Yahweh, which is God. So hallelujah is, uh, you know, Praise God in song. So my mom was actually praising God in song. She was actually in English would be singing, Lord, I praise you, Lord, I praise you. And that's what she was singing. And it was her declaration to God. So with all that said, today's devotion is going to be on that worship song, Raise a Hallelujah by Bethel. It was actually written by Jonathan and Melissa um, Helser, if I'm correct, the pronounce your last name correct. But Jonathan and his wife wrote this song as a declaration um, to their friend's son, Jackson. Um, Jackson, at a very young age, um, his kidneys got infected by the E. coli virus. So he was getting blood transfusions and he was already on dialysis. So even for an adult to be on dialysis, it takes a toll on a body. So just imagine someone that's very young. Well, they were always remaining in prayer for their friend's son. But not too long after that, Jonathan received a text from Jackson's parents stating that um, Jackson was in critical condition and he wasn't going to make it. So at that time, Jonathan and Melissa, man, they, they got down and started seeking God and praying, praying and praying and praying and seeking God and asking God for a, a miracle to take place in Jackson's life. Well, as they're praying, the words of the song utterly came out. That's how the song came to be and that it became a powerful declaration, declaration over, you know, this giant, massive giant that this little Jackson was facing. But the beautiful thing about this is that they made worship a powerful weapon against the forces of our enemy. And that, that's mentioned in an actual song, if you're familiar with the song. And their worship to God became bigger, bigger than, than the illness. It became bigger than their unbelief, became bigger than their doubt, and became bigger than their fear. And that's, that just shows you the power of worship in seeking God. Jonathan said this in an interview. I'm going to read it to you. Simple, but very powerful. He said, keep on worshiping even if you go through trials because this is very often, because this is very often when you will experience God's miracles. And I'll tell you what, that is so true from my personal experiences. You will experience God's miracles. Now let's look at verse two. Verse two says, I raise a hallelujah, which again is praise God. Okay, so I'll say it this way. I praise God with everything inside of me. I praise God, I will make the darkness flee. I praise God in the middle of the mystery. I praise God, fear you lost your hold on me. Beautiful, now let's look at the chorus. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Now when we look at that word ashes, in biblical times and ancient times, that ashes was a symbol of repentance and grief. You know, so in other words, God takes our ashes and turn them into something beautiful. Um, so God will take our ashes of pain, hurt, brokenness, um, even sin, and create it into something beautiful and powerful for his glory. 
the in the last the last phrase in this that course is death is defeated the king is alive and that's awesome because yesterday is what we celebrated that we celebrated that death was defeated and the king is alive and again as believers that's something we celebrate every day but yesterday okay which is this actual special day put aside for that but we know our king is alive now let's look at some of the biblical scriptures there's a few of them because there's a lot of them that use a phrase that word hallelujah psalms 147 one says hallelujah how good it is to sing to our God, for praise is pleasant and lovely. Psalms 149, one states, Hallelujah, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. And now Psalms 135, one says, Hallelujah, praise the name of Yahweh, which is God. Give praise, you servants of Yahweh. And there's so many scriptures in the Bible, especially in the, the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, that, that, that start off with Hallelujah, which again is praising God in song. Now, it's so important for all of us to understand that life will not always be easy. It won't. Um, it will seem that at times your life will be harsh. That's just the reality of it. It will seem that life is unfair. Um, and we also wonder, where is God? You know, Or why didn't God stop this difficult event or stop this illness? And I'm not just talking about the virus. I'm just talking about illness as a whole. Um, but that's something that will most likely some of us will ask, but God's truth says this. He was there with us in our past. He is here with us in our present and he will be with us in our future. God will always be with us. He will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. He will always be with us. And that's the promise that we need to hold on to. Now to end this, um, <laughs> this is just so amazing all over the nation and all over the world. We are seeing thousands of people, you know, gathering together and coming together, singing praises to God, just singing praises to God and seeking God during this COVID-19 outbreak. People in the streets of Brazil, you can see it online. They're just kneeling and praying and seeking God, praying for their country, praying for the world. Many of them are singing praises to God in, in the midst of this, this, this virus. In Georgia, outside of a hospital, hundreds of people came in their cars. They parked and they're just... They're praying for the doctors, for the staff, for the nurses, for our nation. They're praying for them and they're singing praises, they're singing worship songs all in unison at the same time. And we're seeing that happen everywhere, even here in Bakersfield as it's happening. And it's just a, a beautiful sight. There are hundreds of people standing outside their apartment back of their apartment balconies, singing praises to God. Um, praying and shouting to God. We're seeing that happen all over in Italy, in the U.S., and in other countries. It's just a beautiful thing where people are coming together in unison and praising God. That is just a little example of what raise a hallelujah looks like and means. Okay, that's what it looks like and means. But it also looks like this. That in, despite my circumstances, despite my financial future, Despite our economy's future, despite this virus, despite all the loss we're seeing in, I will continue to sing praises to God and I will worship him and stand firm upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ. My question to you today is, are you singing praises of God? Are you still glorifying him and raising a hallelujah to him even during the circumstances that we're going through? That's just something I ask that you just seek God and, 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 and pray about. You know, and today, take time to praise God. Take God time to say hallelujah, to sing hallelujah to him. Not just today, but every single day in our lives, man. Let's raise a hallelujah. Even when this virus just finally just dwindles down and goes away, let's continue to sing hallelujah. There's one thing that I, I know and I see that's going on in the midst of this virus is that lives are being changed. People are turning to God. People that never really gave God the time to believe in him are now seeking hope and they're seeking him. We're seeing thousands of people get saved and give their lives to the Lord. We're seeing revival take place in lives that were once time were on fire for God and then it stopped now that it's been revived. We're seeing the church itself be more powerful and more revived. So that's exciting. Now our job, and I don't use that as a bad word, but our goal as believers is to keep growing in God and keep that revival going. Hopefully again, this was an encouragement to you all. I hope you have a great day and you have a great week. And we will talk to you guys soon, all right? God bless. Talk to you guys later. Bye.